Hi everyone, I'm Chet Udell, inventor of the Airglow, and you're probably watching this video because you clicked the button on the Optron 1A lights intro. And so I'll be walking you through the very basics of using these pre-made modules that will communicate with the Airglow to produce really cool effects. The reason why you're seeing the word Optron all over the place is that the Airglow actually belongs to a 21st century family of new musical instruments called optrons. Optrons are basically what you would get if you crossed a lightsaber with an electric guitar. And there's all different kinds of shapes and sizes. And this is one of the tinier ones in the family. Some of them, the other one that exists at the time of this recording is a 3.3 foot and a four foot uh, optron tenor. And so anyhow, we're messing around with more the alto version here. And let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll walk you through how to create all kinds of fun lighting effects using these tiny little modules. So a tour of the screen here is that we have this little patch generator. We're not going to mess around with much in this tutorial, but you can actually generate these HSV rainbow confetti. You can actually click on this drop down menu and under the output you can find all of these optron bow confetti fire glitter hsv etc so that's where these come from and so these are little boxes that communicate directly with the airglow sensor or the airglow leds and hsv stands for hue saturation and volume if you ever want like a little tiny mini tutorial you can just click on the little help button and that brings up uh, what all of those parameters are so hue takes numbers of 0 to 255 and that changes rainbow color index so we'll go through what all these things mean saturation volume length and or start in the length so to enable a light feature you click this little button and that brings it up the hue is a value of 0 to 255 and that will sweep you through the color wheel the hue color wheel from red through yellow green blue uh, fuchsia pink and back to red volume is the intensity of the light uh, saturation is the amount of color to mix in white to the full color and then the start and the end or the start and the length and we can change these as well by unlocking the patch so if you go to the bottom left here click unlock we have little inlets in here that will enable us to communicate externally using programming with these modules here so this inlet saturation and with the range brightness etc so if I wanted to turn this thing on and off remotely I could go up here and create a little thing called a toggle and when you click it, it creates like this little thingy or you can click hold and drag one into the canvas either of those is fine to connect a thing you can click the outlet of something and connect it to the inlet of another thing and then to interact with things that you make you can lock the patch again in this bottom left and then go up here with your mouse and click click this on and off just as if you would be interacting with this all right um, so if we wanted to, a number box to sweep the hue we would have to create a number box by going up to numbers making an integer box here and connecting the outlet of that box to the inlet and this is a video, so do feel free to pause, rewind, play back again, play back slowly, etc. But I'm going to go ahead and lock my patch. So that is going to this bottom left to lock it, to interact with it. And if I click, hold, and drag with my mouse, that will let me control this. So by learning a little bit of Max programming, I can start interacting with these lights. And we'll see how that looks in future tutorials. And we're not going to get too deep into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, 
get this stuff back to Kansas here. All right. So that is hue saturation volume, HSV. I'm going to turn that off. It helps to turn off layers so that you can see individual ones. So only turning one layer on at a time in this tutorial. Rainbow is fun. Uh, basically, you need to specify your uh, your length, your whether it's on or not, the gradient, the by clicking this little help box, this will show you all of the things. So delta is how many rainbow gradient patterns are in the entire length. So one is the full gradient, so it's going to make like a really wide pattern. Whereas if you increase the number of delta, that is going to increase the number of patterns here. Maybe I can turn the brightness all the way down so you can kind of see it better. There you go. So that's a lot of repeating patterns. Whereas uh, this is nice and wide patterns here. All right. And the brightness. And again, the start and the length. Of that pattern all right the next one is confetti so this will um, create a nice little nice little pattern of blinky LEDs within a certain hue a certain saturation this is review HSV hue saturation and volume and the range but we've also added this extra little bit called density and so density the lower the density the lower the probability of a pixel lighting up this uses a probabilistic model and then as you dial up the the density the higher the probability a pixel will light up and so you can get generate basically a full-on cloud almost solid to sort of like these little popcorn, little popcorn things. So that's a fun one, confetti. Mouth is like a little robot mouth thing that I just kind of saw from all kinds of, you know, that I watched the Jetsons growing up. So when robots talk, you know, their little mouth goes wider when it's louder and soft, shorter when it's softer. And so, you can again set your hue. Uh, you can set your center position here, center, left and right, and then the length. So this is as if a robot were talking, and it winks out if it's all the way out. Right, the volume is how bright the fill, this little fill slider, that's how much bright the inside is. And then the edges, and it's hard to see on this video, but the edges also have their own brightness as well that you can play with. You can do a fill for solid or just go for the edges. All right, next one I'm excited about is the fire. This is a uh, physical model of fire. This is uh, from a demo from the Fast LED library, I believe. Um, so I can't say I invented this fire physical model, but it is uh, super cool to put onto these LEDs here. So here you can, again, change the hue of the fire. So you can you know, have green fire or blue fire. It's pretty cool. All right. The heat, when you dial up the heat, the basically the hotter the physical model is. This is uh, how hot those embers are and the ability for heat to propagate up the tube here. So it's not very hot. You get more sputtering. It doesn't go very high. And then when it gets pretty hot, it pretty much fills the entire tube. So, And then you got your cooling effect, which is like the dampening of, of the heat. And so the Heat will propagate freely up the tube if there's no cooling at all. And if you dial up the cooling, you'll see that the fire sputters pretty good. So it's almost like wind blowing across the fire here. And then, of course, you got the length of the effect short, 
medium, long. And then on the bottom right is the brightness. So you can, so you can see when I'm messing around with the brightness, I can actually cause flickering to happen. So by putting either audio data or gestural data or other kinds of automated things into these inlets here, you can uh, really create some pretty convincing fire patterns. Uh, spit comes from, I was watching Willy Wonka and he talked about uh, being able to spit colors and I was like, that would be kind of cool to simulate here on the air glow. And so if you turn this on, basically you can, uh, w what spitting color does is it will splash that color up on those assigned LEDs and then fade over time. So again, you got your hue, you got your saturation, you got your volume, but then you have your color spread, which is basically um, kind of a random selection around the hue when you are, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at glitter, Never mind. Yeah, so it is hue, saturation, volume, sorry, and the range, so where you want the spit to go. And then finally the fade speed. So the spit can fade like super fast or it can take a while to fade out. So it kind of can create some soft things here. Uh, glitter, this is actually a little thing that goes on inside of the Optron. So when we tell the Optron to like kind of just create these little pixels here we can control the saturation of the pixels, the volume, the density. This is a lot like the um, confetti. And the color spread. So that is like how random the color selection is. So it's going to be green, but the whiter the spread, the more color variation on either side of that selection we're going to include. Whereas like the less the color spread, the more exact it's going to choose that exact hue value. All right, and then RGB sprites. These are fun little red, green, blue sprites. Got a uh, red, got green, and got blue. And they're just chilling here. And we can control individually the brightness of each of those sprites. Red, green, blue. And we can also control the smear. Um, no smear means that when I'm kind of lighting things up and moving them around, you're not going to kind of see little trails behind them. But if I increase the rate of the smear, I can actually, um, let's see if I can move these things around. What's that hot button there? Yes, that's the command click and move side to side. I wonder if I can do that one handed pretty easy. I'm not sure. I'm going to also turn the green and the blue down so you can kind of see the red sprite with some smear. So everyone likes a little smear. You can kind of see that it leaves these, uh, these little impressions behind afterglows. All right. And so that's a decent overview of the lighting effects here. Thank you very much.